kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another Madden Rebuild. This time we're going to be taking on the 2017-2018 Philadelphia Eagles. Now you may be wondering, Juice, why would you want to rebuild the 2017-2018 Philadelphia Eagles? They won the Super Bowl this year and that's the reason why. Because if you forget why they won the Super Bowl, they went on to play the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl, which I still have vivid, vivid memories of, and I still hate Nick Foles to this day because of it. And that is the main reason why we're rebuilding this team, because Carson Wentz gets hurt in 2017-2018 and can't play in the playoffs they give the ball to the backup Nick Foles and he wins the Super Bowl because of it Philly special was invented in this well not invented but Philly special was deployed in the Super Bowl as well and we all know the Eagles win the Super Bowl their first and only Super Bowl championship so that is the main reason why we're going to be rebuilding this Philadelphia Eagles team in 2017-2018 because we're going to try to make it where Carson Wentz is the quarterback that wins a Super Bowl and not that stupid Nick Foles who I hate with a burning passion of a million white hot suns. That's the truth. He is on my list. It's Nick Foles and David Tyree. <laughs> I hate both of them. So, and to this day, David Tyree had some sort of sticky substance on his helmet. I will not listen to any arguments saying otherwise. But anyway, I digress. We are going to be rebuilding the 2017-2018 Philadelphia Eagles in today's video. I hope you guys are going to enjoy. If you do, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, leave your suggestions down below for any other teams you want to see me rebuild. In what era you want to see me rebuild, I have the possibility of rebuilding teams in the modern day, in 2015, 2007, 2012... 1994 college current day college so I've, I've got i got millions of options pick your team pick your era and we can rebuild a team in that time period and try to bring them back to glory or bring them to glory for the first time depending on what team you pick so leave your suggestion down below and let's rebuild the philadelphia eagles this is the squad that we're going to be working with here in 2017-2018. And like I mentioned before, this is the quarterback, Carson Wentz, superstar X-Factor at 92 overall. We're going to hopefully have him be the guy that wins us a championship and holds up the Lombardi Trophy. That is the key. Now in this year, Carson Wentz was playing so well, he was getting MVP conversations. At the beginning of the season or during the season he was getting those mvp conversations but then he gets hurt and the rest is history so carson wentz not good anymore <laughs> just to say that not good anymore but he is uh he's a pretty solid player back in this era so we're gonna make sure that he's got the right developer he's got the right superstar abilities and all that stuff we're gonna give him quick draw we're gonna give him maybe no look dead eye or probably pocket dead eye and then we're going to give him fearless and protected for sure. So he's got the right abilities now. He is going to be our starting quarterback probably, hopefully, for this entire video. And I'm just going to do this real quick before we do anything else. Let me, let me just... Nope, not that. Let me just... Uh, let me just do something real quick here. Bada bing. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there we go. So we've got ourselves... The team. Let's go over it a little bit. We got LeGarrette Blunt, who's one of my favorite running backs of the 2010s. I love LeGarrette Blunt, But we're unfortunately going to have Jay Ajayi start above him because he is younger and he's got a development trait. So we might as well rock with the development trait. Wide receivers is where we're going to need to work on. We've got Alshon Jeffrey, who could be useful for a season or two, but probably not too much more after that. Nelson Aguilar, who's not that good. And then there's not much redeeming qualities after that so we are going to have to probably focus a couple of picks in the draft picks on offensive line or on uh, on receivers speaking of offensive line we're definitely going to need to get a left left guard hopefully 
Left tackle, center, and right tackle are all pretty good. Right guard, Brandon Brooks, I'm hoping is going to be fine, and he should be. So I think if everything goes to plan, we should only have to worry about left guard. Because Jason Kelsey's 29 years old. He should be good enough to go. Lane Johnson and Jason Peters. Jason Peters might retire. He's 35. So left tackle could be an option uh, to move on from Jason Peters. But I'm hoping that we can win a Super Bowl before he retires. But left guard absolutely is going to need to be replaced. Tight end, we have Zach Ertz, so we're good there. And then on the defense, we're pretty solid. We need to add a few extra pieces. Certainly, we need to figure out the defensive line because Timmy Jernigan's fine, but is there a better option? Maybe. Defensive line on, on the right end spot, Vinnie Curry and Brandon Graham. I mean, they're both. Brandon Graham's a legendary Philadelphia Eagle, but normal development and 29 years old, he's probably not going to factor in too much in the rebuild. And there's always going to be better players. At linebacker, I mean, all of these guys are good, but all of these guys could get replaced, theoretically. Safeties, I like Rodney McLeod and Malcolm Jenkins, but Malcolm Jenkins is a little bit older at this point, so we probably need to draft his backup or his replacement. And then corners, we've got Jalen Mills, we've got Ronald Darby, we've got a few guys. Is that Sidney Jones? Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple young guys on the team, a couple decent players at corner. I feel like the defense is going to need a little bit more work than the offense is. So that's where we're playing. That's where we are at here. The draft class that we're going to be using, obviously, the 2018 NFL Draft. So let's go and uh, find that. There it is. 2018 NFL Draft. Baker, Mayfield, Saquon, Barkley. We know the drill. We know what the deal is. It is Josh Allen. It's all these guys, a quarterback. But we're not going to be in the market for a quarterback. No siree. We could be in the market for a running back, though. I'll put Nick Chubb on the list. I'll put Nick Chubb on the list. <laughs> Maybe Philip Lindsay for uh, superstar development. Wide receivers is where we're going to need to make our money here. So DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton, DJ Shark, Michael Gallup. Uh, anybody else? James Washington, maybe. But if we're going to draft anybody, it's going to be the top of the uh, top of the board for sure. And then tight ends. I mean, we don't really need one, but Dallas Goddard, Mark Andrews, Dalton Schultz. I'll, I'll keep an eye on those three guys. That's probably it. Left tackle. We do need a replacement at left tackle. So Isaiah, or Isaiah Wynn. Colton Miller will be a guy that we look for. Left guard. We do need a left guard. So Wyatt Teller will keep an eye on. So uh, Will Hernandez will keep an eye on as well. Center, Frank Ragnall, James Daniels. But we have Jason Kelsey, so we shouldn't need to worry about that. Right guard, you got Quentin Nelson, Braden Smith. Definitely going to be keeping an eye on both of those guys. Obviously, Quentin Nelson. Right tackle, Austin Corbett, Brian O'Neill, Orlando Brown. But we're, we're pretty solid on right tackle, I would say. And then defensive line, Sam Hubbard, Josh Sweat, maybe. Bradley Chubb. I think the last time we did a... a video where the draft the 2018 draft class was involved Bradley Chubb went number one overall I forget what video that was uh, but he's probably gonna be the only one on the defensive line there on the right spot Vita Vea could be a nice replacement for uh, Timmy Jernigan maybe even start over Fletcher Cox that's probably gonna be everybody there left outside linebacker Roquan Smith Darius Leonard for Fred Warner Jerome Baker Middle linebacker, Leighton Van Der Esch, Tremaine Edmonds, Josie Jewell, uh, Rashawn Evans, Harold Landry, Uchenna Nwosu. There's some good linebackers in this class for sure. Corner, we probably need to come away with one of these corners. Whether it's Denzel Ward, Jair Alexander, maybe both of them. That'd be awesome. I don't think that'd be possible, but we would. We certainly want to come away with a couple of them. Teron Johnson, DJ Reed, a couple guys down the board. JC Jackson, Trey Flowers. Uh, free safety, Minka Fitzpatrick, Jesse Bates, Justin Reed, Troy Apke, because he's a what? Uh, Deshaun Elliott. Then you got Derwin James, Terrell Edmonds, Ronnie Harrison, Kaiser White, Foyasada, Luakon, and that'll probably be everything that we go for. I'll add a couple kickers to the list just because, and a couple punters to the list. Okay, so we got our board figured out. Region breakdown, tight end middle linebacker is our strong suit, or our expertise, for Howie Roseman. Okay. Um, I think we're going to fire them and look for something else. <sighs> what do we need to... F let's fire Roseman. And let's go look for something else. So, 
What is our three-star scout going to be looking at? Probably we need to have corner involved, I would say. We probably need to have corner involved. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with corner and receiver. You know what? That might not be a bad thing. I think I'm going to go uh, corner and strong safety too. Or corner and safety, not strong safety. I think I'm going to go corner and receiver. Elisa Tranquil, she always gets hired by me. And, and today is no different. So we're going to go corner receiver. That gives us both options uh, for positions that we do need. So yeah, that's going to be it for this little portion. We're going to simulate to the end of season one and see how the team does. I mean, this is our Super Bowl year in real life. So we'll see if we can get back to it in, in this video. I mean, we have Carson Wentz now, so we'll see what happens. We made it to the end of year one. We made the playoffs, won the division barely. It was a pretty tight division other than the Commanders, who uh, didn't win a single game this year. <laughs> they went 0-17, the first team to ever do that. So congratulations to them, I guess. But the rest of the division was very competitive. Us and the Cowboys finished 11-6, and, and the Giants finished 10-7. and Very, very competitive division, but we must have had the tiebreaker of some sorts, so we jump ahead of the Cowboys, win the division, and make the playoffs as a division winner, get to host a playoff game, which is nice to see. How did we do here in year number one? Carson went 3,400 yards, 20 touchdowns to just two picks with a 58% completion percentage. That's pretty good. I mean, not a whole lot of touchdowns, but... We were winning games, and Jay Ajayi, we were right to trust Jay Ajayi in that development trade because he had 1,700 yards and 11 touchdowns. He averaged 100 yards a game, even. Obviously, because he had 1,700 yards, even. 6.1 yards per carry. That's got to be superstar development and maybe even offensive player of the year numbers. I mean, that's he's got to be in contention at least. Carson Wentz also got 10 touchdowns on the ground. No 1,000-yard receiver, but that's not really a surprise. We don't really have a lot of dominant weapons for Carson Wentz to throw to, which will hopefully change in the in the future. Jordan Hicks had Hicks had 183 tackles. Malcolm Jenkins had 106. Uh, Maragos had 97. Tackle velocity was Brandon Graham with 19. So it turns out that he had a pretty good season. Maybe I shouldn't have been disrespecting Brandon Graham. Fletcher Cox had 18. Tur Timmy Jernigan had 16. Sack leader was Cox with 11. Graham had nine. J Jernigan had five. Three and a half for Bradham. Pick leader pick was Patrick Robinson and Jalen Mills with six. Jenkins had three. A couple guys had two. All right. Now, I, I do want to mention that I don't think this rebuild is going to be super difficult because this Eagles team literally won the Super Bowl the year that we're doing this. So I feel like we shouldn't have to do too much to make them a championship team. And we do beat the Saints in uh, the wild card round. So we go to the divisional to play the Seattle Seahawks. Are we going to beat the Seahawks? I don't know. We are. 38-17. We beat the Seahawks. We're playing in the NFC title game against the Atlanta Falcons. Is there any way we can get to the Super Bowl? Is there any way we get to the Super Bowl and then this rebuild will be over? <laughs> no, we lose 51-21 to the, to the Falcons. That's upsetting. I thought maybe it would happen. I wouldn't have ended the video anyway. It's going to be Falcons-Steelers in the bowl. The Patriots made the third seed but then got beat by the Steelers. All right, so it's going to be Steelers-Falcons. I don't know who's going to win. I mean, the Falcons put up 51 points on us, so I would hope that they would be able to beat the Steelers, but I guess we'll find out. That Falcons playbook is so crazy. So crazy. And they do win. They didn't win by much. 34-31, Falcons win. Keanu Neal is the MVP of the Super Bowl. Le'Veon Bell gets MVP of the league and Offensive Player of the Year. So, unfortunately, Jay Ajayi gets, gets robbed. Everson Griffin wins Defensive Player of the Year. Christian McCaffrey is the Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Miles Garrett is the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Let's go take a look at what Le'Veon Bell did. Did he do better than 1,700 yards and 11 touchdowns? Or are they just, they just yanking the old chain? So, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell had 1,900 yards and 12 touchdowns. Okay, so he did, he did do better. Usually, when they give the Offensive Player of the Year to somebody other than my guy, it's barely any different or it's comparable and you can argue either way but that one he almost had 2,000 yards that's very understandable for him to have both the MVP and the offense player of the year I'll give it to him I will back down on that one usually I like to argue but I, I'll back down on that one that's he had a, a better season slightly better but a better season than than we did with Ajayi so retirements any of our guys retire Shane Leckler calls it a career James Harrison T Sizzle 
Andrew Whitworth, Julius Pat. This, why are all the guys from my era retiring? Man, I feel old. All the guys that I watched growing up are all retiring. But do we have any Antonio Gates? Oh, my God. Everybody from my era is gone now. I feel like I'm left. I'm the only one left. I feel like I'm the, the Will Smith meme in Fresh Prince when he's just standing there with his hands in his pockets in the empty uh, living room. That's what I feel like right now. Nick Mangold? Oh, my God. Everybody. Everybody's calling it a career. I hate it. I want to go back to this time period. We only lose Donnie Jones, the punter. Okay. So we only lose a punter. That's pretty cool. Negotiations. I did bring back Alshon Jeffrey, and um, there was one other guy that I brought back, but I can't remember what his name was. So not many people needed a new contract here in year number one, which is nice. We're probably not going to bring back anybody else. Certainly not Trey Burton for $31 million. Absolutely not. Let's move to free agency. We've got a decent amount of cap space, so we should be able to make some magic happen here. Should be able to make some magic happen. Let's go see. Tremaine Johnson, Prince of Mucamara, Lamarcus Joyner. This is quite the free agent class, that is for sure. Quite the free agent class. We have two decent running backs. Wide receiver we're probably going to focus on in the draft. Tight end Tyler Eifert, only 27 years old. Forget about drafting a tight end. I might just take Tyler Eifert and have him play with with uh, Zach Ertz. That could be a, a nice little replacement right there. Offensive line, we're not going to focus on. Left end, no. D-tackle, too old. Right end, DeAndre, uh, Deion Jordan's only 28. Not worth it. Not worth it. Linebackers, no. Corner, Tremaine Johnson's intriguing. Why does Malcolm Butler have superstar development? <laughs> I'm going to grab Malcolm Butler simply because he has superstar development. I've talked about in the past how I feel like Malcolm Butler is not that good of a player. He's overrated a little bit, in my opinion, and that's coming from a Patriots fan. The only reason he is valued the way that he is, or the way that he was, is because of that interception in the Super Bowl. And I'll stand by that opinion. I mean, he's a fine player, but he's, he's not as good as he may have been rated in Madden. All right, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. We're not going to offer him too much more. I'm going to save the rest of my money. We don't have that much. So we're going to target Malcolm Butler and Tyler Eifert. Malcolm Butler signed. Tyler Eifert signed as well. So we get both the guys that I wanted. We had another corner and a backup tight end. I'm, I'm happy with that. That's a, that's a solid haul for what we had money-wise. So we go here, we adjust the lineup, everybody's playing well. We need to focus on left guard in the offense or in the uh, the draft class, and we need to focus on left tackle in the draft. And wide receiver. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And then defense. Brandon Graham goes up to star development. Jordan Hicks is a superstar development. Jalen Mills is an X Factor. Okay. I'm liking the development here. I must have I guess I did disrespect uh, Brandon Graham. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have tarnished his name. I am going to, before I forget go over here to the player personnel actually first i gotta do this there we go then i'm gonna make sure that we have all of this stuff upgraded all the way so that it's easy for me to trade when i need to if you want to do this uh with all your staff points it's a really useful thing because it'll help you it'll help you trade up pick by pick like i do sometimes so that you don't have to trade more than just a first round pick for a first round pick uh, that'll that'll definitely help you do that one for one basically is how it does it so let you've seen it i've done it in my rebuilds before okay so let's keep moving on mock draft number four but we don't really care about mock draft number four where are we going to be picking we, we're picking probably late in the first round because we had that uh run to the nfc title game losing to the falcons so we're probably going to need to utilize that trade-up spot if we want to come away with a good player and i kind of want to come away with either denzel ward or Jai jair alexander because i never do I've done this 2018 class a bunch of times. I never am able to come away with either one of those guys. So I think that's what I want to do. But we need to go. I'm going to focus on both of those guys right now. And I'm also going to focus on... We're going to use this other one on probably somebody else. Probably. Let's just use it on Jair Alexander. So we got Quint Nelson, Braden Smith, and Jair Alexander. And then we'll use the last three on Denzel Ward and a couple other guys. So let's keep moving. We need to come away with a guard. I don't think we can rock with Chance Warmack for another season, but maybe we can. Maybe we can get away with it. I don't know. 
private workouts. So let's go to this. Let's go down here and just start from the bottom. So I want to use probably Denzel Ward for sure. Ichana Nwosu. And maybe somebody else. Maybe somebody else. Probably Wyatt Teller, I guess, just to find out what his true upgrade or his true talent is. And then we can take a little peek at the mock draft, figure out what, where everybody's going. So Bradley Chubb again is going to go number one overall, this time to Washington. So Jair is going to go number five to the Niners. Quentin Nelson's going to go number six to the Texans. Where's Denzel Ward? Josh Allen to the Bengals is funny. Denzel Ward's 15 to the Chiefs. That's a little bit more manageable. Lamar 16 to the Bills. Look at that. That's hilarious. They have us taking Michael Gallup, which I'm not going to do. I can I can manage a trade up to get Denzel Ward. That's for sure. I can certainly do that. All right, let's let's get it started. Let's get it started. Let's trade up to around 14 or 15 to make sure we get Denzel Ward. And then I have no idea what's gonna come next. Absolutely no idea. We have two second round picks and then nothing else really. So we gotta make this draft count. <laughs> we gotta make this draft count. We can trade up from 29 to probably 27. Who's holding on to pick number 27? It is held by the New England Patriots. So we trade up there, and then we will trade up from 27 to probably 25. Let's trade up from 27 to 25. I don't know who has 25. 25 is held by... Who's got it? Who's got it? It's the J Packers. I saw green. Thought it was the Jets. It's the Packers. So now we have pick 25. We can go up to 23 now. And we're getting closer. Getting closer to that ever elusive pick 14 or 15. So pick 25. We can trade up to pick 23, which is held by the... I feel like it was pretty close. It is held by the Saints. There we go. Trade offer accepted, so we can go to 21 now, which I don't know who that ha who has that. I know the Bears have 22. Who has 21? 21, 21. Who's got 21? The Bills have 21. That's where they were going to take Lamar Jackson. Well, we'll change that. They're not going to take Lamar Jackson at that spot. We have 21 now. Now we can go up to number 19. Who's got number 19? Number 19 is held by a team named something. Oh, it's held by the Colts. There we go. So we trade up to number 19, and we are almost there. We just got to trade up to number 17, and then trade up to number 15, and then probably trade up one more to number 14, just to make sure that we're ahead of the team that's projected to take Denzel Ward. So 19 to 17. Who's got 17? Who's got 17? 17 is held by a team called the Giants. Bing, bang, bongo. There we go. And then trade up to 15. I wish it didn't take me out of this every single time, but it is what it is. Number 17, moving up to number 15, which is held by the Chiefs, because they were projected to take Denzel Ward, so we'll make that happen. And then we will trade up one more spot, which I think is the Jaguars. And we will... We'll make this happen. Okay, Saxonville, by the way. This is the era of, of Saxonville. I think the Jaguars have number 14. And I would be correct. Trade up from 15 to 14. There we go. So now we are ahead of the Chiefs, who were projected to take Denzel Ward. We'll get to the draft, and we will see just what's going to happen. We will see what's going to happen all right, let's start drafting and see. Number one overall pick should be Bradley Chubb, and it is. Baker goes two to the Cardinals. Roquan Smith to the Bears, funny enough. Vita Vea, Jair Alexander. I could have traded up to get Jair, but 
I like. I, I think Denzel Ward's going to be just as good. Quentin Nelson, Derwin James, Will Hernandez, Hayden Hurst, Connor Williams, Josh Allen to Bengals, Rashawn Evans, Sam Darnold to Miami. And here we are at number 14. All right. I almost skipped it on accident. That would have been bad. Denzel Ward, welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles. 91 speed, 92 jumping, 91 agility, 93 excel. Denzel Ward is our new number one corner. That's a big pickup. It's a real big pickup. We go to the second round, late in the second round. There goes Yuchenna Nwosu. Would have been nice to get him. Okay. So what is left on the table for us? Not a whole heck of a lot. Tremaine Edmonds is probably the best player available. I don't think we can pass up on Tremaine Edmonds. We have to make these, these draft picks work because we don't have a lot of them this year. So Tremaine Edmonds at middle linebacker. We can make Jordan Hicks a right outside linebacker or something like that. He can, he can still play. But we have two second round picks. We need to make both of these count before we before we simulate to the fifth round because we don't have any other picks in between all right let's see mike mcglinchy got taken mason rudolph brandon parker okay so there's not a whole lot of good players left justin reed i did see which i wouldn't hate taking i have him on my board for a reason i wouldn't hate the justin reed pick and that might be where i go i just want to make sure that nobody else on this board i care about that much and i don't think i do so I'm going to take Justin Reed here in the second round. And boom, that's another big solid pickup. Love to see it. We got three amazing players in this class with our three first or our three picks. And now we don't pick again until the fifth round. So a lot of players are going to be gone. Avante Maddox just got picked ahead of us. Who's on the board still? Not a whole lot, but still some, some decent players. I was hoping Dalton Schultz and White Teller would still be here, but they're not. So we will grab ourselves... <sighs> Teron Johnson, probably. Hidden Development. That's another solid corner to add to the squad. Add to the sk 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 squad. And then we will go right here. Jordan Wedhead got taken. That's a solid pickup. Really, JC Jackson? Why does he always go before I'm, I'm ready to take him? That's kind of crazy, actually. We'll take James Washington with this pickup. I thought it was going to be fine to take J.C. Jackson, but he, just, he got grabbed in the little bit of picks before my next one. Then we pick in the, second, the sixth round, and this is our last pick of the draft, so we got to make it count. Got to make it count. Who are we going to grab here? Who are we going to grab? Sean Elliott, Philip Lindsay, or we could take Cedric Wilson. I mean, he's here for a reason. Somebody, Nobody liked him, I guess. Nobody liked him. Who do we take here? Christian Sam, Raymond McLeod. What is the offensive line class looking like nowadays? Not amazing at left tackle. Not too much better at left guard. Will Clapp? I, I gotta take Will Clapp. He's gonna be normal development, but I can't pass up on Will Clapp. He should auto automatically have superstar X factor. That's how. That's how good Will Clapp is. All right, so we come away with a really good draft, considering we didn't have a third or a fourth round pick. I feel like we came away with a pretty solid draft class. Let's see how good those guys are. So we got Denzel Ward, 75 overall. Tremaine Evans, only a 66. Okay. Justin Reed is a 72. Johnson's a 68. Washington, 65. Clapp is a 63. Who was the best players in the class? Probably Saquon and all those guys. Quentin Nelson, 83. Jair, 81. Mark Andrews, 79. Yada, yada, yada. We've seen that class plenty of times in these videos. All right, we go into year number two with a pretty decent team. I mean, we made the NFC Championship, and we I feel like we got better. I mean, is that stupid to say? I feel like we got probably a little bit better at least, if anything. Let's take a look at the team. Let's take a look at the team. I mean, we don't have to worry about quarterback, which is a really nice thing. Not having to worry about the quarterback. We still need to worry about the wide receivers, though. And the left side of the offensive line. We need to work on these two things on offense. And then on defense, we are going to need to work on probably... I think corner's pretty much done at this point. Corner's pretty much done. We'll see what happens with linebacker. And we'll need to work a little bit more on the defensive line in, in the next year or two. But we're pretty much almost ready to go. 
almost ready to win a championship. So I'm going to simulate year number two, and we'll see how we do. We wrap up year number two. We did a lot better this time. 12 and 5, won the division pretty easily, and got ourselves the second seed, I'm assuming, because at 12 and 5, not being the number one seed, I'm guessing we are the two seed. Unless the NFC was just absolutely crazy. Yes, we are the two seed, okay? So, the Rams got the one seed. They must have had a little bit of a better, better record than us. The Rams had a 12-5 and five record, too. So, we tied. They just happened to get the tiebreaker, I guess. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We still had a pretty solid season. And Carson Wentz was pretty productive. 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, one interception. He's doing all this with not that much talent at the receiving core, if we're being totally honest. And Jay Ajayi just keeps on getting better. He did what what Le'Veon Bell did last year. 1,900 yards with 10 touchdowns, a 6.8 yards per carry. Oh my God, Jay Ajayi, you are the GOAT. <laughs> like, what else do you want me to say? Nobody's really getting that much usage at receiver. This is a running back oriented team. <laughs> this is a run game team. But that's okay. I mean, it's getting us a bunch of wins. So can't complain too much. Michael Kendricks, 182 yards, or 182 yards, 182 tackles. Jordan Hicks, Hicks had 174. Jernigan had 90. Fletcher Cox had 85. Tackle for loss leader was Jernigan with 27. Cox had 25. Edmonds had 19 as a rookie. That's weird. He played a lot. He wasn't supposed to play a lot, but I guess that's good. Sack leader was Jernigan with 10. Cox had 6.5. Edmonds had 4. Bradham had 3.5. Uh, Curry had two. Butler had four picks. Picks? McLeod had two. So did Jenkins and Robinson. All right. So that's where we stand as far as year two stats. Now, where do we stand in terms of playoff games? We will beat the Arizona Cardinals. We take on the Atlanta Falcons, which beat us in the first year. We should be able to beat them pretty handily. They're the five seed. This should go down pretty easy. But we'll see where it goes. 10 and 7, 12 and 5. It's going to be a victory. 34 26. Okay. We take on the Rams. It's a 1 versus 2. This is how it should have been. And it's a 1 versus 2 on the AFC side of things as well. It's a 1 versus 2. This should be a good matchup. I think we should be able to handle it. I might even want to jump in and maybe help the team out a little bit. I don't know. We're, we're a better team on paper than them. We should be able to handle them, but we'll see. 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 1 versus 2. Come on, get us past the NFC title game in year number 2. And we do 34 to, to 13. Okay. Now it's Super Bowl time against the 15 and 2 Steelers. This is going to be quite the difficult game. This is a good Steelers team before Antonio Brown loses his mind and Le'Veon Bell holds out for a contract. This is a very good Steeler team. We're going to jump in and see if we can handle it. It would be awesome if we were able to win a Super Bowl in year number two. I would probably go one more season regardless to defend the championship. I wouldn't end it after this season, but we'll see what happens. We will see what happens here. We're leading 10 to 6 and we put up another touchdown 17 to 6. The Steelers put up another field goal. They put up a touchdown, but we put up one. They put up another one. Okay, it's getting a little bit close here. Back and forth. Oh, it's getting crazy. We It was back and forth right there. The Steelers kick a field goal, tie the game. 32-32. to 32. It is an overtime possibility here. They are doubling up on Alshon Jeffrey. Look at that. They stack over the top there. This could be dangerous for them. If we put... Carson Wentz on a post here. The middle of the field could open up a lot. And I'm going to have to throw it, and it's going to be swatted away. Thank God he didn't pick it off. They backed up pretty heavily there. They backed up pretty heavily. All we got to do is get in the field goal range. We don't have to score a touchdown. We have 22 seconds and all of our timeouts. So if we can just move the football even slightly and throw a pick. Oh, my God. I almost threw a pick. I am selling this game, and so is my team, to be honest with you. My team is selling this game because they're not giving me a lot of time on the offensive line, are they? There we go. Waited for it. Nelson Aguilar getting right up there. Call the timeout. We have 12 seconds. We are in very good position. We needed that that uh, to go well, and it does. It does go well. 
12 seconds. We could get two more plays if we're quick. We'll go right there. That's going to be Aguilar again. He holds on. Call another timeout. We are in beautiful field goal range to win this one. We're not going to call it just yet. I know this is pretty risky. Seven seconds, one timeout. This is very risky, to be honest with you. But we're going to change this to just a straight-up vertical. Go quickly. Alshon, or Nelson Aguilar scores a touchdown with four seconds to go. And this, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be one year late, but still win a Super Bowl. And it's because of that man right there, Carson Wentz. Four seconds remain. And that is the ball game. Your Philadelphia Eagles are world champions. For the first time in this video. Ooh, we got it done. We were a year late. They were supposed to win it in year one. We didn't do that. We got to the NFC Championship. But we do get to the Super Bowl and win it this year. I'm not going to end the rebuild after two seasons. We'll go one more year since we already won the championship. We'll go one more year and see if we can defend it. But that is a, that is a W right there. Jason Kelsey gets his championship like he was supposed to get. But now Carson Wentz probably is going to get Super Bowl MVP. Instead of, what, they give that to Nick Foles? Stupid. Carson Wentz has got himself the championship that he always wanted. Although, didn't they give him a ring? Didn't he have a ring from that team? I think he should have. I don't know. But that was a crazy hot route to change. He was supposed to do a vertical that was supposed to, like, curve over to the right side of the field. But then I changed it just to straight up uh, go route, and, and it worked. He outran everybody and scored the touchdown. I was just looking for the field goal or to get closer to the field goal range and waste a little bit more time, but I'll take the, the touchdown and, and clinch the Super Bowl. Big time W. Let's move to the negotiations here, or the recap, and see just what happened. So Carson Wentz gets MVP. Cam Newton gets MVP of the league. Le'Veon Bell gets another Offensive Player of the Year. Anthony Barr, Defensive Player of the Year. Nick Chubb is Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Bradley Chubb. Chubby time double over, or double time. It's times two chubby time. Bradley Chubb gets Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay. That's a weird one. Never really see both the Chubbs get the players, or the Rookies of the Year. Okay. It's time to get to the good stuff. One more season. Win or lose. To defend our championship. One more season. Negotiations. Carson Wentz needs to accept his option. Landry Jones is our quarterback. Jake Elliott we want to bring back. We're going to offer him a seven-year deal, but we're not going to go that far anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, boom, Jake Elliott's back. Ronald Darby I want back. So we will offer him. Uh, we have $12 million. We need to figure out a way to bring back... Ooh, there's a couple guys that we need to bring back. I don't know how we're going to do it. We need to bring back... I mean, Aguilar made a good touchdown play. We need to bring back Jordan Hicks. And this is going to be all of our money, probably. Almost guaranteed. And I don't even know if this is going to be enough to bring him back. Thank God he said yes. So that's everybody. Nigel Bradham, Patrick Robinson, all these guys are going to have to leave for one final season. That's not going to help us. That's not going to help us at all because we can't go into free agency and... and uh, sign anybody now because we have oh who retired we just got a bunch of money who retired go to the philadelphia eagles Tra brent selick laguerre blunt and jason peters so we lose laguerre blunt and jason peters that's some big time contracts that just freed up okay i wish i would have known that before i let those other guys walk <laughs> so quarterback no running back no uh wide receivers I mean, we need a receiver. We could bring back Nelson Aguilar, and I might do that. I might do that now that we got that money freed up. So Nelson Aguilar hopefully will come back. Tight end, no. Left tackle we need, but there's not really a left tackle that I like. I mean, maybe we go Cyrus Kawanjo. Maybe. That's not really that good of an offer, and we can't even afford him, so probably not. We have $11 million. We need a left guard as well. There's Chance Warmack. Can I get him back? I can. Man, we are really scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't we? We are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Let's see if we get these two guys. Nelson Aguilar, Chance Warmack, bring them back. And only Aguilar signed back. So Chance Warmack went somewhere else. We get back Nelson Aguilar, which is honestly probably the better option because we need receiver pretty badly. 
So we'll adjust the lineup here. We got Isaac Sayamalu. We need to figure out this offensive line spot. Zach Ertz is now a, an X Factor. I would expect... How does JJ not go up to Superstar after a 1900-yard season? Timmy Jernigan's now a Superstar development. Okay. And we need to figure out... Okay, we, we're probably not going to defend our championship. I will say that. I don't know how good we're going to be, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like we're going to be that good. We're going to have to figure out this, this draft. We're going to have to bring in some pretty good players. We are going to have to bring in some pretty good players. I didn't even take a look. What is uh, Denzel Ward's development trait? He's, is he X-Factor? He is a star. 75 overall star. Okay. Whatever, dog. Whatever. We got pretty good corners, so we don't need to focus on corner anymore. We probably need to focus on wide receiver, offensive line, and linebacker is probably the, the three positions that we need to go for in this draft. So our focus players, what are we going to do? For, this is the 2019 draft class, so wide receiver we need to focus on. So we need to look for Debo, we need to look for Terry McLaurin, and we need to look for... Dalton Reisner. Those are going to be the three guys that we offer here or that we scout further here. And then when we get to the next week and we have the ability to do the private workouts, then we can do the final ones. And probably do some linebackers, I would guess. Mock draft number five is also available. So private workouts. We got ourselves some linebackers. We don't need corners. But we do need probably Bobby Okereke, Dre Greenlaw, and somebody else. Probably Chris Lindstrom. Let's do that. Let's do those three guys. Those will be our private workouts. And we can take a look at the mock draft, see where everybody's going to go, and then decide what we need to do. So mock draft number five, Kyler Murray going to go number one overall to the Niners. We obviously have the final pick in the first round. So if we want to trade up for anybody, which we probably should, we're going to have to. Who do we trade up to get? Who do we trade up to get? Um, There's not really any offensive linemen that we need to trade up for unless we want to trade up to get Chris Lindstrom. But do we want to do that? I'm not really even sure what we need to trade up for. I don't know. I mean, obviously there's some really talented players here that I would love to have, but I don't think we need to trade up to get any of these guys. I mean, it's tough to say, but I think we just ride it out because there's some good players in the in the later rounds. So I think we just ride it out with what we have. That could be the wrong the wrong suggestion. That could be the wrong thing to do. But we'll see. We will see. Start the NFL draft. Niners have the first pick. Don't fumble the bag, and they don't. They take Kyler Murray, Quinnen Williams, Ed Oliver, Devin White, Rashawn Gary, Nick Bosa. Man, the Washington Commanders just got Bradley Chubb last year and Nick uh, and Rashawn Gary this year. Their defense line is going to be crazy in a couple years. Nick Bosa to Cincinnati. Josh Allen, Cleland Farrell, Chris Lindstrom. I didn't mean to click that. I didn't mean to click that. Brian Burns, TJ Hawkinson, Irv Smith, Montez Sweat, Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence, Jeffrey Simmons. The D tackles usually go pretty pretty consistently. Debo goes, AJ Brown goes, Nikhil Harry, Jerry Tillery, Dwayne Haskins, rest in peace. Noah Fant, Andy Isabella, which going in the first round is crazy. The Patriots get Daniel Jones. No! No, Belichick, don't do this to me. DK goes to Atlanta. Tristan Hill, Byron Murphy, Taylor Rapp, Darnell Savage, and B uh, DeAndre Baker. So here we are at pick 32. Devin Bush is on the board. There's some left tackles available, which is probably what we need to go. Josh Jacobs didn't get taken. Can I... Oh, no. Can I pass up on Josh Jacobs? We don't need a running back though. We don't we just don't need a running back. We don't we don't need a running back juice. We don't need one. We have Jay Ajayi. He's doing fine. Uh, man. 
I don't know where to do this. I feel like we're going to have to take a left tackle. And I feel like it's going to have to be Jonah Williams. That could be the wrong move. Maybe it's Andre Dillard. It's probably not going to be Dalton Reisner, even though he's he looks pretty good, but he's around two to three, and I can't take around two to three in the first or the final pick of the first round. So, Jonah Williams, oh, don't screw me. Hidden development. I don't know if that was the right idea or not. Whatever, I did it. I did what I did, and I done what I done. Now I don't expect Terry McLaurin. To make it to the final pick of the second round I, I guarantee he goes within the next like five picks there goes josh jacobs to cleveland and i was right and he goes to washington i was correct in thinking that devin bush to seattle why do i keep doing that i don't want to click that i might as well just skip to our pick skip to my loo all right who's gonna be available who's gonna be available dre greenlaw bobby okereke Okay, so a couple of guys. Let's take Okereke. Although that's not the right idea. We're in the second round, not the third round. Maybe we take Nate Davis or Eric McCoy. Let's take Eric McCoy. Hidden development. We can move the offensive line around. We can, we can figure out where to put everybody. But that's going to be my pick for the second round into the third round. It's nice to actually have a third round pick. Please let somebody be available. Dre Greenlaw and Okereke are available. I'm going to take Green. Uh, I'm going to take Okereke. He has no development, but he's a option at linebacker. That is for sure. Into the fifth round now. We will see who's left. Uh, not a whole lot. Maybe I should have taken Dre Greenlaw instead of Okereke. We get Jamel Dean, who's a hidden development corner, but we don't really need corner at this point. And then we have a seventh round pick. I'm just going to let the, the CPU handle that. Okay, so we were able to figure out the offensive line somewhat. We didn't get a receiver still. I just don't know what, we, what we're what we going to do. 72 overall Jonah Williams, 62 or 68 overall Eric McCoy. Same thing for Bobby Okereke, 69 for Jamel Dean. They took Amani Oruwarie, Jamie Gillian, and Jaleen Moore. All right, whatever. I don't know how I feel about that draft, but at least we already won a championship, so it's not the end of the world. It's going to be an interesting season in the final one to see how it goes, see if we can defend our crown or not. Having Carson Wentz and Jay Ajayi is certainly going to help, but did we get a whole lot worse? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we did. That's up for... That's up for discrimination and, and for figuring it out. How good of a guard is Jonah Williams? He's a 72 overall at left tackle. What about if we move him to left guard? Does he go up or down? He will go up. So Jonah Williams will start at left guard for us this year. And then we still haven't gotten any wide receivers. That's okay. Uh, and the defensive line is going to have to be what it is. Tremaine Emmons is going to start at, at right outside linebacker for year number two or year number three. The corners are looking really good. Uh, yeah, that's how it's going to be for for this season. And we're going to try to win a, a second straight championship. I'm going to simulate to the end of year number three, the final season, and we'll see where we are. Okay, here we are at the end of Season 3, into the playoffs. We won the division again, this time going 11-6. and six. So certainly not as good or as dominant as we have been in the past, but that's to be expected. We kind of lost a few players. <laughs> uh, so let's go see what the stats did. Carson Wentz, again, he's doing all this with really no weapons besides Jay Ajayi. So... He's, he's putting up good numbers, 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, 4 picks. Those are good numbers for Carson Wentz, consistent numbers. And Jay Ajayi continues to be the best player of, in this offense. 600 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's had three straight seasons of over 1,500 yards. I'd say that's quite the year, the, quite the, the rebuild. Then, again, just I like he's, he's not working with anybody that's amazing. If Carson Wentz is, uh, we still managed to win a Super Bowl, which is kind of crazy. Uh, again, Jordan Hicks is dominating with 183 tackles. Okereke, 110 is a rookie. Malcolm Jenkins, 102. Denzel Ward, 96. Tackle for loss leader was Timmy Jernigan, 19 for Fletcher Cox. 25 for Jernigan, by the way. 13 for Edmonds. 
sack leader was Cox with 12. Jernigan had 10, 9 for Brandon Graham. Uh, Rodney McLeod led the team along with Butler and Mills with 4, 3 for Okereke. Bobby Okereke had quite the year. And he wasn't even projected to start or anything. Which is quite interesting. But now it's time to play the Chicago Bears. Duh, Bears. In the wild card round. And we will beat them 27 to 10. Taking on the Detroit Lions here. Are we going to win? I don't know. It's going to be pretty tough. Lions are pretty good. So we'll have to be careful of that. They are 12 and 5. It's going to be difficult. Come on, boys. And we win 31 to 14. Okay, now we play the revenge game against the Rams. The Rams want their revenge. They want to go to the Super Bowl. I don't want them to. So we're going to have to play this pretty tight. They're 13-4, 11-6 are us. Come on, get the W, and we don't get it. 41-6, to we lose in the NFC title game. So in the three seasons that we rebuilt the Philadelphia Eagles, we went to the NFC Championship twice, and we won a Super Bowl. So I'd say that's a pretty solid rebuild, even though we haven't really given them a whole lot of future to look forward to you've got a lot of contracts that are expiring and really no weapons at receiver uh todd Gurley gets the mvp of the super bowl as the rams beat the bills Le'Veon bell gets a third straight uh no not a third straight he gets a third straight offense player of the year but a second out of three mvps miles sanders gets offensive rookie of the year for the bucks and ocean jimenez gets defensive rookie of the year for the texans and also gets defensive player of the year so that's pretty good but we will finish the rebuild now by wrapping up with the team. This was, I said, wasn't going to be too difficult because we were already starting with a pretty solid team. But winning it in year number two was not something I expected. The team is pretty good. That is, that is to be fair, the team is, is pretty good. There are some holes, obviously. Like, we need to figure out this defensive line situation. Jamel, um... Timmy Jernigan is now an X-Factor. We need to probably work on this linebacking core if we were going to go further. The corners are pretty solid. I mean, we have Denzel Ward, we have Jamel Dean, we have Sidney Jones. So that's three unbelievable young corners. Um, so the cornerback situation is in a pretty good spot. We have Justin Reed to eventually take over for Rodney McLeod. Really, the we need to figure out a strong safety spot and a defensive end spot and linebackers. So there's a few different things on defense that we would need to work on. Uh, as far as anything else, we obviously need to get wide receiver help. We need to straighten out this offensive line. And then that's basically it. So offense doesn't need as much help as the defense does. But that's going to do it for this rebuild. We won a championship with the Philadelphia Eagles just like they did in real life. Although it took us an extra season to do it. But we finished this rebuild with the Philadelphia Eagles. We got a championship. And we, we, made, it, we made it so that Nick Foles did not exist in history in this in this eagles dynasty it was carson wentz the entire way and he was playing pretty well considering he didn't have any weapons just think if we would have given him a bunch of weapons to work with he would have been probably double the production as he was putting up with this team so i hope you guys enjoyed if you did leave it a like subscribe to the channel join the juice cup thank you so much stop by and watch i truly appreciate it if you have any other suggestions for teams you want to see me t attempt to rebuild i went through all the the mods that i have in the beginning so go back and and re-watch the beginning of the video if you want to see that i have uh 2017 2007 2012 2015 20 uh, or modern day i have college football i have all the kind of stuff you want to see so pick a team from any era in the ones 1994 and any era you want to see me do that i mentioned and uh yeah i will uh, take them into consideration and probably do them in an upcoming video hope you guys enjoyed i'll catch you guys in the next one peace